Hi, this is Gary Fong, and I'm going to show you how to use the gray dome to get spot-on accurate color. Now, what I have down here on the table is an assortment of my color gel products, and when we want to have really accurate color, we're going to put the gray dome in here just as a reference shot. That's for shot number one. The reason I want to do that is because I'm going to measure the neutral color off the gray dome, and then everything else will fall into place because if the gray dome is too warm, like it probably is right now with this kind of lighting, then once it does the correction for the gray dome, then all the other colors will also not be warm and they'll be accurate. So that's kind of the cool thing about the... Uh, so that's the first shot, and that should be uh, the test shot. Now I'm not going to change any of the lights here. I'm going to keep everything the same. We're going to do different products. So let's just get this move this out and we'll take the first shot that does not have the dome in it we're going to keep that color setting for all the rest of the photos now let me grab that peanut butter thing we're just going to do a jar of peanut butter and then what other things do we have laying around all right so you all know what the peter peanut butter color is going to be i don't know if you do or not but anyway now I haven't changed any of the lighting at all, and now I'm going to shoot the jar of peanut butter, and we want that to be accurate color as well, so let's just go ahead and shoot that. Okay, and um, actually when you look at this one, it's got a blue sheen to the front, which is, which is pretty cool. Let's find one more product to shoot. That would be kind of weird. Alright, so we're just going to do bottle scope here, and that's kind of a color that you know might be interesting to match. We'll do that. One quick shot. That's with the scope. And one last product. I don't know, I'll just throw my boot on here. Let's get Mr. Boot. And we'll have accurate color on that one too. So the principle here is you notice that the lights haven't changed and I don't know what the correct lighting is going to be for any of these things. But I'm going to know, oh, this is nice, because you can see on here, it's a very bluish mixture of color. Once I use the gray dome, I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll keep that setting for all the other images, and that's how you get the perfect color. And consistent, by the way, so th they'll all be perfect. Okay? Thanks. Welcome to Lightroom 4. In Lightroom 4, I'm going to show you how to take this gray dome as a reference and make it a synchronized color perfected image for the rest of my photos. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these images and I'm going to click on develop and this will bring us into the area where we can modify and measure the images. Now what we're going to want to do here is go to the eyedropper tool right here like that and we're going to just go ahead and click on this dome. Boom, just like that. And what I've done is I've picked the dome, and it's, of course, supposed to be neutral. This is my handle. And as a result, all of the other colors have now fallen into line. Now, you can see right here in this neat little preview window that when I go ahead over, say, example, the red gel, way over here on the left, how the colors all change. So I'll just kind of move them around on the gels. So this is kind of the idea, is that it's asking you, what is gray? And that's where... Oh, this is kind of interesting. Look at this right here. When I pick the red, it turns the over here, watch right there, when I pick the red, it turns the red dome gray. So that's why we went ahead and picked the uh, gray uh, as a neutral balance color. So we're going to pick that. And now, actually what I'll do here is I'm just going to go ahead and make this film strip even larger by going down to this thing and pulling it up like that so we can, you know, basically see a little bit better what's going on. So now I have this one color corrected by having selected the gray tool with the eyedropper tool the gray dome with the eyedropper tool. Now I want to color balance all these other ones with that same color correction because all these other guys are in a situation where the lighting hasn't changed. So I'm going to select all by just going to Apple A or Control A and then I'm going to, you see the sync button right here? I'll hit sync. Now sync starts off with all of these things checked and I don't want all of them I just want to change the white balance and maybe the basic tone uh, so we'll just actually let me just kill all these we'll say check none and I'll go white balance basic tone and then we'll say synchronize watch what happens down here 
boom all of these now have changed to match the gray that's right here in this dome so I'll just go ahead and go across so this is the photo the reference photo that has the gray dome removed so typically if you're shooting a series of still images you would have the gray dome in one to tell you this is gray and then all the other ones would then just now accept the same color change and fall into line so my boot the scope, the peanut butter, these are all now correctly color balanced through Lightroom 4. So this is Adobe Photoshop CS6. Don't be fooled by the weird color if this is uh, not what you're used to. This is just the template a color scheme for CS6. All the other versions of Photoshop will have the typical white window with the black text. And as you can see as I scroll down the windows, this is Photoshop. Um, so I've got this one image right here that has kind of a weird color cast and I want to fix it. The way that I fix it is if I can make this a neutral gray like the dome that it was inside that shot then this will be perfectly calibrated and all those other colors will fall into place. So in order to do that I'll just go up to image adjustments levels or you can see the keyboard shortcut right there and I'll just go ahead to this second eyedropper the one right in the middle and you'll see a little thing will pull up and tell you what it's all about it says sample an image to set gray point I'll click once there and I'm just gonna click right here on the image and look at that I've got myself a really nice neutral color and all of the other colors now fall into shape so now that I have that I wanna save this setting I wanna save this preset so that it um, can be used later for the other images because remember the other images the lighting hasn't changed and the other images aren't going to have the benefit of having this gray thing in the photo you're not going to want to have a gray dome inside every photo that you take but you do want one for the first shot to get the reference so we'll go to this little uh, preset options right here and we'll say save preset and then we'll just call the name uh, office on January 13, 2000. That's not really a date, but uh, just, and then I'll call it Gray Dome or something. That way I'll know that this was the color just for that one situation, and that's the only time I'm going to use it for the other images where the light did not change. So we'll say OK and we'll save it. Now let's go ahead and reload that same picture, and you see the color cast is off, but it now does not have the Gray Dome. So I want to use the color correction that I previously was able to calibrate with the levels tool so I'll go again and we'll go to levels or your keyboard shortcut right there to make it faster and instead of doing the eyedropper because really again I don't have anything gray in this photo do I and I can't click on the wood because the wood is kind of a different color so what I want to do is use the reference of the old photo that we just did and that was that one right there gray dome okay and so you see that the color just now changed so that it is accurate same thing here with this peanut butter and remember I didn't change the lighting for any of that we'll just go Apple L for the shortcut pull the default down and we'll go to that action and there's the color same thing with the scope uh, I'll just go Apple L default pull down to that and there's the color so and then lastly I'll just do my boot um, same thing pull down here to today's date and that is the color correction for that setting so now this boot looks realistic this peanut butter looks realistic and everything back here is color calibrated because I was able to use this as an anchor for the rest of the shots so that's basically how to do it in Photoshop now there's a way to actually batch process all of these and that's something that you can find on YouTube under Adobe Photoshop batch processing images uh, you would just go ahead and use an action and uh, that's a little bit outside of the topic of this video in terms of workflow but uh, you can certainly research that very very quickly okay so that's how to do a number of images using one dome as a reference photo to calibrate the color of your images cool all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to even hold this dome right next to your face. Uh -huh. But you're going to turn toward that. Uh -huh. And just like this. Turn your chin that way. Okay. Um, and then try to hug your fingers. Fingertips. I know. It's <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Perfect. Lean it toward me. So it's kind of like your face. Yeah, just like that. So what I'm doing now, and you don't need to do this, but if I wanted to have spot on accurate color,
this is what I would do. I would have the person hold this for the very first image as my reference photo. And then later in the video, I'm going to adjust it in Lightroom. So I'll put this on YouTube and then I'll show you what we do with that. But before I do that, I'm going to change the white balance to um, incandescent. Because I want to screw it up so that we can fix it later. And I've got it on uh, tungsten lighting. And so, so what you're going to see here is that it's very off. Okay. So, um, and then what I'm going to do later is, of course, I'm going to fix it in Lightroom. <laughs> okay. So that is the, the first shot. And then now that I have that, that's my reference image. So now that we're in Lightroom, I'm in the develop mode. And I'm just going to hit the dropper right there and click once. And there is my color. Mm -hmm.